Hi class, today we're gonna glaze your practice cup. First thing that you wanna do is make sure that you found the right glaze to use. All of our cone six glazes are under the back counter. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you look on the label and make sure that it says cone six. If it says anything other than this, cone six, you should not use the glaze. Remember that the colors of the glaze are different than how they will turn out. Check our test tiles to know for sure how the glaze turns out on our clay. For example, if I like this color glaze, that one's called Nassau Blue. The next thing you wanna do is make sure that you've really stirred up the glaze and made sure there's no sediment on the bottom of the bucket. The glaze should be somewhere in the consistency of heavy cream. If it looks like yogurt, don't use it. If it looks like skim milk or water, don't use it. Also make sure that your tools are totally clean. This one, for example, would contaminate the glaze because it has some other glaze on it. If you want your cup to be functional, meaning that you can drink out of it, eat out of it, anything like that, it's incredibly important to completely glaze the inside. That makes it food safe. If food were to be put inside this cup, it would absorb into the pores or water would leak out of it. So when we're glazing for functionality, we want to make sure we completely glaze the entire inside. It's often nice to glaze the outside and don't forget that you can glaze all the way up to the edge of your foot ring. So only the part that touches the table needs to remain unglazed. Here's an example of a different kind of foot. I can glaze almost the entire pot except for those little spots that touch the table. Now that I'm ready to start glazing my cup, I've stirred my glaze. And remember the way that we apply glaze is by laying it on. So I'm not brushing back and forth a million times. I'm laying on a coat. As soon as my brush gets dry and I start to see the clay, I load it back up again. You'll see that the glaze dries pretty fast. And you'll do one coat over the entire thing. If you have a texture, you might have to kind of dab the glaze into the texture. Now that I have one coat all the way around and it's dry, I'm ready to put on a second coat. You need a total of three coats for a uh, complete cover. If I wanted to use more than one color on my pot, I can layer the colors. So after my first glaze has dried, I can take a second glaze and apply it over top of the first one. Where the colors overlap, you'll, you'll likely get a new color. It is not okay to mix glazes together in a separate container, for example, and think that you're going to have a combination of the two colors. A chemical reaction happens when the two glazes interact. It may not be what you expect. So since this is your practice cup, I would encourage you to test your uh, ideas whatever you are thinking about doing for your set, you're gonna to wanna to do a trial here with your practice cup. 
Don't forget that you can also glaze the bottom as long as it's not touching the tabletop. So I'm going to put some glaze in the bottom of my foot ring here. As you can see, it was a little bit difficult to do that. So after I'm done, I'm going to make sure that there is a clean ending edge and that there is absolutely no glaze on the bottom by taking a damp sponge and wiping that glaze back. Now it looks like I have a precise end point to my glaze and I'm not in any danger of having it stick to the kiln shelf.